Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us. My name is Tom Howard. You can find me at Tom at collateralbase.com. That's the name of the firm and the software we're going to be unveiling here. Uh, you know, maybe you guys have seen me from certain things, uh, certain things in different channels, uh, channels that might, uh, oh, that, that, that might be the channel that it's from. And, and if that's the case, thank you so much. I hope that you're enjoying the show. Don't forget to smash the likes and the subscribes. But um, honestly, I'm here to talk about Collateral Base, and we have a presentation on it. Uh, the outside software. Uh, we shut our company down and we get like a lot of leads that come in uh, from our cannabisindustrylawyer.com uh, website that we have that answers a lot of questions regarding licensing in the lawful industry. Uh, and we've created this software that helps any industry. And so we're also broadcasting on our collateral based networks. Uh, any industry that has a lot of capital, a lot of partners, high regulations and barriers to entry, uh, they would be able to be benefit from this collateral base outside GC software. Uh, and so we're going to be using it in a use case. Uh, and we have some slides that we'll go over uh, at the end. We'll take some questions. I don't think it's going to take about 30 minutes. And uh, we were closed to new clients at collateral base for most of May, uh, putting this stuff together, worked with some really good software companies out of Canada. Uh, one out of Miami that we're still working with and uh, creating something that is going to be quite useful. Uh, and now that we've set that up, you know, well, let me just talk, talk about what types of use like this could be useful in crypto or token businesses, NFT businesses, uh, tech businesses, uh, real estate businesses, anything where you have um, kind of like a fund that you would need to raise uh, and simply because that's when you have complexities you have assets and you have other aspects in which um, you need to have a lot of good documentation uh, and that good documentation we can handle from inside the software this outside gc software uh, collateral base that we're calling it and uh, let's go over it a little bit here's the the slides that we have for you again that's just my contact info most of you know that oh what's the point of appearing in a and this wonderful thing with this mullet, if I'm not going to use it. And so now I'm, now you have a reason to tune in. Uh, because when was the last time you saw a guy uh, with a mullet wearing a bow tie give you a presentation about outside GC software? That's right. So uh, the key points that we're going to be covering today, I'm going to zoom myself up a little bit so that you can see these. Uh, cannabis is complex and corporate. Again, this could be for anything that's camp, uh, complex and corporate. Uh, partners, they may fight uh, even more so when things are uneven. Uh, for example, if there's social equity aspects of it, there really uh, causes a lot of uneven bargaining positions. Uh, same with like investor capital, if you're trying to raise whatever seed round you're on. Uh, and then so software can provide a great solution for uh, keeping and uh, maintaining these business records. And there's, there's good reason to keep business records are admissible. Uh, and that's one of the things, you know, um, you have to realize that when people are having business meetings, they are not being people. They are being fiduciaries operating as the company. Uh, that aspect gets, gets lost on many people that are in, into these types of partnerships and starting up. Uh, and so uh, some people may not want to have the board meetings recorded. Some people may not want to sign the contract. These are all red flags. And, and this is what the software uh, seeks to really remedy in the industry so that when something goes wrong and it will go wrong, uh, it's inked and it's documented. So management should be protected uh, and the company should not be liable, provided that you've created the right types of paper trails. We're going to go over that in a little bit. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, and it's a great way to, for also to put together these applications because the life cycle of several businesses, what, let's say it's software, you need a code base or at least you have to say that it works uh, and then uh, to raise some money to pay their engineers uh, to get to revenue. Or in the case of emerging agriculture, you have to grow and then you have a yield and then you have a price per pound that you'll be able to do. Um, these are all things that I'm trying to say so that I can brand this generally as opposed to specifically, uh, which is one of the problems with the emerging agriculture industry of the cannabis plant. Moving on. Okay, so what's a retainer? Nobody likes retainers, uh, but uh, they're routinely charged and retainers are upfront fees. That is an amount of money paid on a regular basis to secure the services of a consultant, freelancer, lawyer, or other professional, and they only represent the reservation and do not constitute the final cost of services to be provided 
that mostly just kind of says you get the right to have some person represent you or your interests in some particular thing. Uh, now we created a software model on that. Uh, software as a service is pretty much anywhere. And what if you had a uh, outside general counsel machine on retainer that you could then go to and use to help operate your business? But it also came with a consultant or a lawyer. We have several um, offices already open, and we have more offices opening every day. But uh, let's let's move on to the next one. So this monthly retainer that we have, uh, that's really what we're pricing this as. This is you get access to our collateral based software for a monthly retainer of 200 bucks. Now, that's that's the upfront retainer to say, OK, we're going to write that uh, very complex application for you in, in a jurisdiction like Illinois, where uh, they just handed out some more winners. We had another one. Uh, it was great. Uh, and then maybe your jurisdiction is New York or maybe your jurisdiction is New Jersey or maybe your jurisdiction is Mississippi. Mississippi just came online. Uh, there's so many things that go into winning one of these applications. So uh, having your team's documents in an organized uh, location where you can send e-signatures and everything. And then after you get something done, have somebody who's done it before sit down and talk with you about what you did. That's that's really what you get as well. And that is 30 minutes of monthly consultations with a lawyer that's familiar with a particular industry uh, and then software to create these business records cloud storage to keep your application materials in order and an hour of follow-up email support per month. That is what you get with our retainer package for collateral base. Now we're going to see it in action. Uh, this is where things will get a little wonky. So bear with us as we go from this presentation into some actual um, web uses of the software. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is take a small break where I'll hit the uh, technical difficulties and then exit this and get into the next one. Here we are. This is the collateral base uh, user interface. And what we're going to do is we're going to pretend that uh, you're going to have a business meeting and you're going to create a resolution to, let's say, buy out somebody or to uh, buy in to something. Uh, there's already been an LOI or maybe you're uh, going to discuss the terms of that LOI. Uh, and then you're going to have minutes of a meeting. And those minutes are eventually going to be reviewed and approved in the next meeting. And then you have an admissible business record. And that is just evidence. You see, evidence is nice to have when something goes wrong. So let me just log into the uh, area and I'm going to show you a few things on it. So when you log in, this is because I'm an admin. So uh, I'm going to just go down to my, myself as a client. Uh, here is the client area and the client area has numerous things. As you can see, it has the recent matters that you have. It has this book of meeting. So once a month, don't forget to sit down and let's talk about where you're at on the process and the exit is here i'm gonna have to exit that okay and then you can create a new matter select from the menus of services use a form template or create a blank matter matter uh let's let's see if i can dive into one of these matters for you right now and let's say uh, this is just an engagement this is the general counsel contract so to use our software you're going to go through and get this contract and sign for it and then there's, of course, the retainer that you would pay. Now, what if this isn't this particular contract? Let's say it's a letter, a demand letter to a, a business partner or something. Uh, you can click that edit in Word. And so while you're having your business meeting, you could be uh, ensuring that the document uh, is what you represented it would be. Uh, I'm assuming that the up oh, there it goes. And so you could just start editing it directly. Uh, now, of course, I'm coming to you live and then I'm asking my computer to do some calculations and it may make a little bit of a lag time, but it usually loads fairly quickly. Uh, and that is one way that you can do it. And then when you're done, uh, I believe here, no actions, send for signing. Now you have the thing how you want it. Everybody's talked about it. We know who needs to sign it. Let's say this is a bad use case because I'm using a, a demand letter. But what if this was your operating agreement or what if this was uh, a letter of intent from your president uh, or what if this was a MIPA? What's a MIPA? Why don't you retain us and you'll see uh, a MIPA is a thing. We like to use LLCs. And as an aside, let's just take a little small aside for it about why we like to use LLCs. Uh, they're, they're flexible. 
uh, and they can adopt tax consequences just like a corporation is by the check the box regulations. So you can still be taxed as if and have that type of protection. Why are we talking about taxes and protections? Because of one provision of the tax code that only applies to one industry. You know what it is. Uh, and, and anyway, uh, the LLCs uh, allow you to have a lot of flexibility and run it kind of like a corporation, but with formalities relaxed. Uh, and so they just have different, different nomenclature. Uh, a MIPA is a membership interest purchase agreement as opposed to like a share purchase agreement, because instead of shares, you have membership interests. And because of that flexibility, we just use a lot more LLCs. Why would you want to use a C Corp as your holding company? Well, perhaps your exit strategy is to be sold to a publicly traded company for stock. So if you're starting up as a software company and you want, oh, let's see, who are we using right now? We're using all of them. We're using LinkedIn. That's Microsoft. We're using uh, Google, which is YouTube. And then we're using Meta which is the Facebook streaming. Uh, and as a result, they're all publicly traded companies. Maybe you would want to be a C Corp, hold some assets in LLCs and then be sold for a stock and cash deal in the future. And that's your exit. Uh, that's why we use LLCs and, and that's what the nomenclature was. So why don't we check out then some of the other things that you have access to? So there's your new matter. Let's go to our menu of services. Uh, and this is the life cycle of your business is what I'm capturing in this collateral base aspect of it. Uh, I am putting the beginning, the capital raising, the operations, and then the transfer. Corporations or companies are just like you and me. We have life cycles. Not, uh, now, of course, the life cycles can be substantially longer. For example, Coca-Cola or Fa uh, Johnson & Johnson uh, or the East India Trading Company. Uh, I don't think that one's around anymore, but they can last for hundreds of years. Uh, however, they still have their life cycle. And most of them, by the way, they don't even make it five years. So uh, most of them, they don't. And many applicants that form these LLCs and organize them with their uh, rights in regards to collateral, that being like the real estate assets, the equipment assets, maybe the management of the assets, you know, who is going to be over there harvesting the products, whatever that means or you know sending the clickable ads or whatever your industry is or selling the tokens um so that aspect of it is going to have particular things and so you're going to start and that's where we start right after you've retained this as being your outside gc software provider uh, you now have to start your business and that's where you have your operating agreement whether it's managed or managed and then you operating agreement whether it well that is a single member operating agreement why do we do that? Because we recommend that your particular license very often is a single member LLC that's wholly owned by a, uh, a larger multi-partner uh, LLC. Sometimes you can have that license LLC be uh, 5149 or 6535 if you're a Connecticut uh, social equity applicant. That's important because it, it is required by statute, by the applications to comply with the law. Uh, however, let's say your holding company was that, then you'd just be able to have it pass through uh, and, and represent at that level. Uh, it makes it easier, but uh, we also segment uh, the license from the regular assets uh, because maybe the real estate is developed amongst that partnership. Maybe not. Maybe the real estate's also a single LLC, uh, a single member LLC held by the multi-member LLC because the real estate's another asset. And then there's the management company. That's that's a different asset. Uh, and you see a lot of these types of assets structuring uh, in the emerging agriculture industry. Uh, it helps to isolate which one is going to get the bad tax treatment, but also insulate against, you know, what asset is what. So your real estate isn't in jeopardy because you've lumped it in with your license and the operations that you have with that. Uh, we also have a contribution agreement. Who is doing what for how much? Do you just give away percentages? I love when I, I'm talking to people and like, you know, it's it's one of these things where I'm just like. So let me get this straight. He's in here for 22% because he's a guy. What does that have to do with anything? Uh, and that's one of the reasons why you put the contribution agreement in. It says what people are going to do and, and it says what they're going to get. Uh, and, and that's important because what happens if the guy just wants to go, oh, I got the license. I'll be in Florida. 
Hey, you were supposed to do X. Meh. I have vested interest. What's your vesting schedule going to be? Those types of things can all go into your contribution agreement. And you can see here uh, we have a banking resolution. Uh, and that doesn't have a price. That's right, because the uh, software comes with certain basic uh, documents that you need to operate your business. Uh, let's go over the free ones because everybody likes to get something for free. That's a bank and resolution. That means that you can go ahead and open a bank account. Very important when starting a business. We have our basic non-disclosure agreement and that non-disclosure agreement doesn't have a price. Uh, because, you know, a lot of people, once they start talking about a proprietary type of business, they want to keep it secret. Now, if they also not want to get cut out of the deal, that's the non-circumvention one, a small charge for that. And after you've paid for it, you see, uh, then you get that, that you have that document in your repertoire. Like it's made, we go over it with you. We go, do you understand how this works? All right. Would you like to edit it on Word? Okay. And you can continue to make new ones. And you can continue to hold them in here because it's also, we haven't gotten to the hard drive capability yet. We're getting to the hard drive capability. Okay, back to this. That's that's getting started. Uh, and then this is getting investors. So the NDAs, subscription agreements, different than a contribution agreement. You have a subscriber after you have the business formed. You have a, a contribution when you're forming the business. All right. Uh, then we have some secured transactions material for you. What secured transactions basically mean that there is collateral involved. And so we have a secured revolving credit note, uh, a loan and security agreement, a security agreement basic version, and an LOI was just added. That's a letter of intent to purchase. Uh, so it's getting investors and creditors. So those are some of the documents that you need for that. Now let's go to running your business. Running your business, uh, independent contractor agreement. We give you that one for free employment agreement and then we have a service level agreement for example maybe a, a grower agreement or a management agreement uh, and then we have some more free ones uh, corporate board meeting minutes and corporate board resolutions be it resolved that we are going to do this and this is an official action uh, and it's legally binding and it'll be admissible in court and then everybody's going to sign it uh, i suggest that you have a lot of those because if you keep the amount of specificity to a minimum and something goes wrong in the future and you didn't plan for it, you know, that's the problem. Um, I've had clients come to me after they've lost a lot, uh, hundreds of thousands, millions. And then you ask them like, well, do you have that? You don't have that. Well, what about this? You don't have that. Oh man, these would be good facts to have. What about that? You don't have that. Hmm. Well, we can do a lot of things as good lawyers. We cannot travel through time. I don't care if you have a mullet, wear a bow tie, anything. We can't travel through time. Uh, and having these types of facts in your record, if something does go wrong, will make the settlement dis uh, discussions go much more effectively. Anyway, let's get back into it. So this is a corporate board meeting of minutes. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and get started on it. You can start filling it out, uh, corporate board meeting. And then what is it going to ask? It's going to ask certain stuffs about uh, your company, the jurisdiction, virtual, what time, when was the meeting called to order? Who's the chair? Who's the manager? Who was the present directors? Did you have a quorum? Hopefully I can just kind of speed on through. Yeah, it's not going to print it out. Would you like to include any re resolutions? Yeah, yeah. And then here's where we have uh, approval of the corporation, articles incorporation. corporation. I'm going to put a slash there because that's correct for parlance of C-Corps. But I'd like to also include the parlance for the LLCs, and that would be articles of organization. Uh, approval of corporate's bylaws or operating agreement, amended operating agreement, removal of directors, accepting a director's resignation, appointing new directors, removing officers. Uh, yeah, because as people invest, they very often get titles. Appointing directors, approval of uh, register in foreign states. Uh, we're opening our New York office, and that means we got to register for an, an, a compliance filing or at least two compliance filings uh, in our future. Something for us to do. It's Thursday. Yeah, we'll get to it soon. Tomorrow. <laughs> approval for obtaining loans, <clears throat> approval of contracts, purchase of assets, disposal of assets. Really, the doings of business go on in these types of things. Transfers of shares, approved dividends, aka take a profit. 
change the registered agents, change the office, any custom resolutions, anything specifically that we did not talk about, Jeff? In this hypothetical, Jeff must be uh, one of the owners. And then you can hit submit. It will create the form. Of course, it's going to give me an error because I didn't put anything in. I could have put dummy data in. I'm not going to put dummy data in. Uh, instead, I'm going to go back to my uh, user area. This is the one that I would be using to run collateral base and putting all of our uh, documents in there. As you can see, you can have files. And so if we were working together on your um, uh, application or your, your, this is a deck I'm trying to get to open. We actually have to go, but it's a, it's a hard drive. And then if you go up and you go to files, you can see it again. And maybe it's not opening because I'm streaming. Hmm. I had to select that. Still is probably going a little slower because I'm streaming. And so here's a little deck for, uh, you know, a, a grow. And we can help you out with those. And then we would also be uploading the rest of your application materials in there. Uh, and then there's your matters. Uh, and your contacts. And so the people on your team, you can see you got Tom Howard, Abe Lincoln, Bob Hope, and YouTube. Um, files, again, this is where if we were working together, I could put a folder in here and then update your stuff. Templates, you can create your own templates. This is where it gets interesting. And so if your company is trying to do something and it needs it on a regular basis, like it's one of those run your company docs, we can help you make it. Isn't that neat? And so uh, it, the store offering that we currently have is enough to launch it. It's not enough for me. Uh, and so what you're going to see in a year is a very robust offering that is extremely useful for the management of your company. And that's why we made it, because we were dropping plates all over the place and it was just too much to keep track of. <clears throat> and I said, man, we really got to get on top of this and be really well organized so that if something happens, we go right to it. Well, it's signed right there. Well, who didn't sign it? Bob. Come on, Bob. What's wrong with Bob? Why isn't he signing this? Uh, and all of that would still be documented. So if anything goes wrong, I think Bob takes all the money out of the bank, goes to Vegas, bets on the wrong color. Poor horse. Loses everything. Uh, at least you have all that trail of evidence. And so he's not going to be able to discharge that in bankruptcy. Of course, uh, nobody can go to bankruptcy in this industry just yet. But industry is that clearly not NFTs. Uh, anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed uh, our, our new launch. We have a lot of people that have already signed up. And now we have a lot more that, that can. And then from there, we help you build out your company. And then we help you build out your application. And then we go to the next step. And then the next step. And then the thing after that. So uh, you can contact me at Tom at Collateral Base. I'll take a few questions. I mean, it was only a 20 minute presentation. Uh, and that, that was kind of the point. Like it's, it's neat. It's very useful, but it's very um, simple. Yes, the app is up and running. Uh, this is not for filing your LLC. There's numerous companies out there that will file it for you. This is for managing your company. Now, uh, that means we can have an LLC. We have people that code. And so very often these LLCs are all filed through websites, some of which that have APIs, some of which that don't. Some software as a service that already does that is out there. And they might just be like, because this software uses some of those, like hello sign. And so there might be another provider that's out there that we could get and then shoehorn it in there. And then they would get a cut of something and it would all work that way. But um, <laughs> it does not automatically fire, file your LLC. It, it creates the deal. So filing the LLC, that is clipping your fingernails. You know, uh, it is <laughs> just filing it. The real doing is in the operations and the documenting and the paper. Okay. Yes, that was the whole point. Now we go, this is the front 12, 12 in the back. That's right. And that's, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make, uh, this thing come out and it should be really, really great uh, for the clients and, and make operating their business and keeping their documents in order and including their, their application documents in order uh, much easier uh, because some of these documents and applications, they are hundreds of pages long. Uh, and then you get it. Great. 
Now, how do you have your HR in order? How do you have all these other things in order? Uh, you can use our retainer on this to, to help run it. And we're gonna be using it with our clients. Then we have some really cool stuff that we uh, haven't talked on. So once you've invested uh, $3,000 in the company, we give you access to our mastermind uh, area. And that mastermind area has just been updated again for uh, Q2 that we're in. Uh, and then this mastermind has uh, these. So here's the application mastermind, which will actually like it's a it's a course. It goes over how we've won our applications, how you can win your applications, put all this stuff together, uh, calculate what you need to calculate to show that your cash flows work, all that type of stuff. But then also uh, we just added this one, how to write cannabis applications. And so on that, you'll see me actually writing applications for various jurisdictions. I uh, just got done with some Massachusetts ones. Uh, probably now I'm going to start working on a lot of Mississippi ones. Uh, you know, New Jersey, that keeps you busy. Um, Illinois, that'll be interesting. And we've already written them. It doesn't seem like there's going to be too much that's a difference. Uh, New Mexico, fairly straightforward. Uh, and then soon, I don't know, Virginia, New York. New York will have them. I just hope that they open up a little bit more. You know, these limited market states, I don't like them. It doesn't look like there's any more. Oh, there might be some more comments. Yes, all we do is help with the application process. Like we don't, you know, if we, we'd recommend if you're your registered agent, you know, um, especially if you're in a jurisdiction where we do not reside because your registered agent is supposed to be at a business location in order to accept service of process on the LLC or other company, corporate organization during regular business hours. So when people put their houses down as the registered agent's address, Unless you literally are in a house as your place of business, like I am, it's, it's this is the workhouse. Uh, you shouldn't do that, you know, uh, because then you're not you're not open for business. You're not there from your business hours to accept service process. People do it all the time. though. Uh, anyway, uh, that's one of the things that we do. Oh, no, no. Uh, your, your business credit, like you're supposed to segment your LLCs. You have to understand the, the way that MRBs work. And I'm going to use the technical term just so that the algorithm doesn't censor me. It's bad enough with what we've already called this thing. Uh, you have to uh, keep the uh, hot, bad, dangerous LLC by itself. And then you can have the tier two MRB LLC, holding company, real estate development company, whatever, that then has a lease with the hot, ooh, bad uh, LLC that has the actual license. Uh, you should get us involved to do it during the process. And so like, get us involved at the front end and then we can help you with all of the stuff because if you've never written a complete application, you've never written a complete application. And, and if you've written a complete application, it's still a tricky thing. They because sometimes the state will make it so terribly complex and then give you a deficiency just to see what you'll do. Will you comply? Will you ask? You know, will you will you answer everything that you've done and, and make sure that it's timely submitted to the person that it's supposed to be submitted to? They're like screening you for how well you can be regulated and compliant. How much trust should they put into you? Now, that's one aspect of the regulatory landscape. There's another one called Arizona. Uh, that was regulatory ease. You're following the rules, right? Oh, yeah, totally following the rules. See you next time. Uh, some states don't have it like that. Uh, you know, like New York will probably be a lot more regulation. Illinois is a lot more regulation. New Jersey, Miss uh, Michigan, definitely Mississippi, I bet. Maybe not um, New Mexico. Definitely not Oklahoma yet. Let's see, hide that. And thanks, guys. I do appreciate you hanging out, uh, even if you are just uh, one of the members of the show. Uh, don't forget to visit us over at CannabisIndustryLawyer.com. Of course, uh, I am Tom at Collateral Base, the name of the firm and the, the software that we're launching for helping to manage your firm. It's why do we call it that? Because it's, it's like the bank of your business. That is where your assets are kept. And those assets, those contracts are your freaking assets. That registration filing that you have, you know, with the state, that's just like a little one piece of paper, one page piece of paper. Sure, that's an asset, but that asset is like a requirement by law. That doesn't have any um, operational impact. And so that one really doesn't 
create rights and obligations. I mean, it, it does by legal fiction because you've like uh, met the, the threshold for them. But the, typically the, the rule is if you don't have an operating agreement, there's default rules. And most people don't know what the default rules are if they haven't taken the, um, the time to put together an operating agreement. But uh, we can help you out. And, and you know, thank you so much for, for tuning in and checking this out. We'll follow up with people who uh, came by and I'm going to get back to work. All right, guys. Uh, hopefully you have a great day and I will see you later. Still going to credits. Thanks.